Jeremy here again, and in this video, I'm gonna be ranking the graphic design apps and softwares on the market right now. So here I've got a list, I've got a ST down to a D tier, and I've got some apps here that I'm going to be ranking. And I've used most of these apps, and I'm just gonna give my honest opinions and tell you what is the best graphic design tool for doing graphic design, um, you know, and creating cool brands and, and identities and logos and all that cool stuff. So let's kick it off with Canva. Now, I'm not a supporter of Canva, but it is a great tool for beginners or people that are not really uh, designers or, or went to professional design school or whatever, because um, it's a drag and drop template based builder. You know, it's got a lot of functionality. It's got Unsplash, um, you know, integrated into it. It's got a lot of different other tools, APIs um, integrated. It's got a lot of interesting, you know, images and templates and layouts. But um, at the end of the day, I feel like it does lack that flexibility and that control um, compared to other design apps. So for me, I'm gonna put Canva right in the A tier there um, for that. Let me just move this up like this. Beautiful. Now, Vector. Now, this one is a free app. It's actually not a downloadable one. It's in the browser. It's very limited in its capabilities and it's very simple. And even like some of the tools, they're a bit like buggy. They don't really work really well. And um, you don't have that control over the, you know, the artboards and you know, the layers are a bit funky and stuff like that. So it's, it's a very, very, very basic tool. Um, so for me, I'll, I wouldn't recommend it. It's better just to use Canva or like Affinity Designer. So for Vector, I'm actually gonna chuck it down and um, put it probably probably on the the C or D T. I'm thinking I'm thinking D. Yeah, I'll probably chuck it here on, on the bottom there. Uh, put it at the bottom of the barrel. Now next up we have Affinity Designer. So now I'm just including Affinity Publisher and Serif and Photo. Um, so that's basically equivalent to Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign. So here I've got the Affinity logo. Now Affinity Designer is literally like Adobe. They've literally copied it um, almost. And um, they've got a few little features um, that's missing, but overall it's it's got a pretty good quality um, program that they have and the pricing is very good on it as well. So for me, I think it's a really, really great pick and I'm gonna chuck it in the AT with Canva as well. I just feel like it's got that flexibility, got that quality and yeah, the, it's a growing company as well. So overall they're gonna be doing really well. Now next up we have Figma. You've probably heard of Figma. It's mainly a UI and UX and prototyping tool for you know doing websites and, uh, and designing apps and stuff. But over the past like three, four years, it's started becoming a graphic design tool. You know, they launched things like Fig Jam and um, you can actually create graphics and illustrations and slide decks and a whole bunch of stuff. So for me, Figma is gonna be in the ST. It's become very popular and a lot of people are using it for a whole bunch of stuff, even designing like carousels and stuff for Instagram, like social media graphics. So. For me, Vigma is growing, it's it's really good, and I think it's, it's a bomb. Adobe Illustrator, now, this is my favorite tool out of the bunch. I use it on the daily, I use it for everything. Presentations, illustrations, design, logos, branding, whole bunch of stuff, even layouts, whatever it is. So for me, it goes in the ST, and I'm sure you, you would've known that already, but it's just a, such a great tool, it's robust. And some people might complain about the Adobe Suite being expensive, but it's not really. I only pay less than $30 a month, so you just gotta know the tricks on how to get it for cheap. Um, but um, yeah, for me, it's a top-notch top tool. It connects with all the Adobe apps. You know, I'm a big advocate for Adobe. Next up is Photoshop. Now, Photoshop is amazing. It's one of the most important tools in the arsenal of design because you need to do photo manipulation, editing images and all that stuff. So for me, doing Photoshop um, and using it on the regular is important. And for me, it has all the features. It's robust. I can create any type of graphic I want. I can edit things very easily. So for me, it's gonna be in the ST as well. That's just a no brainer. We've also got InDesign as well. Now, this is mainly for print design um, or if you're doing like, you know, brochures, eBooks, flyers, um, anything with an interesting fold on it or even packaging design, you can do that in InDesign as well. So for me, InDesign sits on top as well. So. I, I'm a bit biased towards Adobe, but you know, they're great tools, they work, they function, um, and they just, they get the job done. So so we've got Gravit Designer, you know, lacking some features. Um, Gravit is free as well, and, and GIMP is free as well, but yeah, for me, um, uh, the, the UI is decent on there, and, and it's actually pretty good. Um, but yeah, once again, the functionality, you can't really create 
um, robust designs in that. It's very, very limited. So for me, I'm going to chuck it in the uh, B tier. We've also got GIMP as well. Now, GIMP is, for me, it's like really outdated. It's, you know, not it's not optimized. Um, it's kind of lacking features as well. Um, they've obviously tried to copy things like Illustrator, Finity Design and stuff like that. But for me, yeah, it, I don't think it's great for professional use. If it's free and you're in a third world country and you like money, then I, then I think it's okay. But for me, GIMP is just kind of um, not really usable um, for me. Like, So for me, I'm probably going to chuck it um, down. I'll probably chuck it in the CT. I, I know some people do actually use it and they find it useful. So I think for me, chuck it in the CT. Now we've also got VsMe. Now VsMe is based on templates. You can actually create a lot of social media templates, infographics, stuff like that. And it does does the job like it, it's pretty decent you can actually extract images and your colors and logos from a website if you drop in your website it's actually gonna automatically import that so i think that's really really cool um so yeah vizme it's also not that expensive as well but obviously like it's not even though you can customize things it's still sort of um limited in the customizability like that the control of stuff like you have to click um you know like i can't really because it's in the browser, I can't really use like all these shortcuts like I have in Illustrator and stuff like that. So for me, um, I think it's great for like marketing teams or, um, you know, small agencies that want to um, speed up the template flow. But for me, um, I'm probably going to put it um, probably in the, in the VT um, just because they do provide decent templates. So I'll chuck that there. You've also got other sites like Crello as well. I'd probably put Crello around here, but like these are the main graphic tools that I found on, on the market. There's things like PicMonkey and stuff like that, but you know, they, they're, they're basically all similar. So this is my list. Let me know if you would have swapped something around or if you would have put something else in the ST. Let me know in the comments below on your opinion on which is the best app. Thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Subscribe for more design content every week. Talk to you next time.